Hi, and welcome to the Digital Digging YouTube channel. This year sees the 75th anniversary of the Battle of Britain, one of the most fierce, desperate and critical air battles ever fought. With this in mind, the Aces of the Month for August and September will commemorate this event and we'll start with Eric Locke. Eric Stanley Locke was born in April 1919 in rural Shropshire in the West Midlands of England in the village of Baston Hill near Shrewsbury. The family business was farming and quarrying. Locke was privately educated but also spent much of his childhood immersed in country pursuits such as horse riding. As an adolescent, he experienced his first taste of aviation when his father paid for a brief flight with a travelling air circus. Reputedly, the young Locke was not particularly impressed and continued with his aspirations to follow his father's footsteps into farming. However, events were to have a profound effect on Locke's future, with political tensions turning more and more towards overt hostility throughout the late 1930s. It was evident to all that a war was not far away. Locke figured that if he had to go to war, then aviation was the best way to fight and so enlisted with the ranks of the Royal Air Force Volunteer Reserve, an organisation which had been established in 1936 to supplement the number of aircrew in the event of war. When war broke out in September 1939, Locke was called up. He excelled during flight training and was streamed onto single-seat fighters, being commissioned as a pilot officer before his posting to his first frontline squadron in May 1940. This was No. 41 Squadron flying Supermarine Spitfires from RAF Catterick in Yorkshire. Shortly after beginning his first frontline tour, Sawn Off Lockie, a nickname derived from his short stature, returned home briefly to marry. After returning to No. 41, he continued with the squadron routine of long days on standby awaiting German raiders. This was particularly frustrating for the pilots of No. 41 Squadron, as for them, isolated up in the north part of 13 Group, they could only watch from afar as the Battle of Britain was fought off the south coast of England. However, Locke was still able to shoot down his first enemy aircraft on August 15th at BF 110 over the North Sea. Everything changed at the beginning of September. No. 41 Squadron was rotated down to the south as part of a wave of replacements to relieve the battered and fatigued veterans of the summer fighting. Now stationed at RAF Hornchurch, Locke was in the very midst of combat. Two days after arriving, Locke shot down two German bombers in a single engagement before being attacked by an escorting BF-109. Locke turned to engage the German fighter and after a brief dogfight shot it down. By the end of his first week in 11 Group, Locke was credited with nine aerial victories and was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross. Incredibly, he received a bar to his DFC only three weeks later after shooting down 15 German aircraft in 19 days. On November the 17th, Locke scrambled to intercept a formation of enemy aircraft near Clacton. In the ensuing engagement, he shot down two BF-109Es of JG-54 but was hit by another German fighter. Bullets and cannon shells tore through the Spitfire's cockpit, striking Locke in both legs and his right arm as well as forcing his aircraft's throttle fully open. He managed to fly his crippled Spitfire back towards his airbase, descending from 20,000 to 2,000 feet before cutting his engine to carry out a glide landing at Martlesham Heath. Locke was trapped in the cockpit for some two hours before he was rescued and then carried two miles by soldiers who made a stretcher out of their rifles and coats. He would remain in hospital until May 1941, requiring 15 separate operations to recover. At this point, Locke had been credited with 23 confirmed kills and 8 probables. Even though his squadron's entry into the Battle of Britain came relatively late, Eric Locke is widely acknowledged as being the highest scoring Allied fighter pilot of the entire campaign, although some sources credit this accolade to Czech pilot Josef Frantisek. Locke was awarded the Distinguished Service Order for his contribution to his nation's defence. In June 1941, Locke returned to the cockpit for a refresher course before being posted to No. 611 Squadron flying Spitfire Mark Vives from RAF Hornchurch. Now promoted to Flight Lieutenant, Locke was a flight commander for his offensive sorties as the RAF stepped out for operations over occupied France. Locke had not lost his touch, he shot down three BF-109s in the first few weeks back in action. On August the 3rd, he led his flight over France during an offensive fighter sweep. While returning to England, he called his flight to let them know that he had sighted a concentration of enemy soldiers on a road near Calais. The last time Locke was ever seen was as he dropped a wing to break formation and dive down to attack. His comrades lost sight of his Spitfire, he did not rejoin the formation or respond to radio calls. No wreckage or body was ever found. A charismatic flyer, Locke flew with a V for Victory painted on his Spitfire and wore a captured German life jacket in combat. 
few have equaled Locke's outstanding success in combat in such a short period of time. Today, Shropshire Aero Club at Sleep Airfield has named its bar in honour of their local hero. The various pictures of Flight Lieutenant Eric Locke now look over the aerodrome, which is used almost daily by neighbouring RAF Shawbury to train the helicopter pilots of another generation of the RAF, Fleet Air Arm and British Army Air Corps. OK, that's it for another video. If you liked it, then you know what to do, and if you didn't, then you can always do the other thing. Right then, cheerio chaps, and I hope to see you for the next one. Bye-bye.